Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello, everybody. I'm here with my wonderful partner, John Coleman, and Bill Jordan, one of our favorite people to talk to all the time. And um, hello. Good well, to hi. see you. Good hi, guys. To see you guys. It's nice to get together. I love these get togethers. It, <laughs> it's always uh, three old guys chatting about important stuff. And, and why don't we do a shameless plug for Bill? We're, we're em- boomers. We're, we're all boomers. boomers here, aren't we? Embracing the boom. Yeah, baby boomers. That's it. There you go. Okay. Live your life, forget your age, and embrace the boom. And if you want one of these mugs, you can get it online. And if I get a chance at the end, if these guys let me, I'll tell you where to get it. Okay. Perfect. Okay. It's a deal. Um, uh, you know, I, I don't know about you guys, but I am still stuffed from Thanksgiving. So, which, which, Did you play the turkey again? <laughs> we, You know, we have – our family is just big enough with the kids and the grandkids that not everybody likes turkey, believe it or not. I can't accept that. But so we have more food than we ordinarily should have turkeys and hams and, and who knows, whatever. Sure. Pork roast. And it's obscene, but we, the problem is everybody else is smart enough to eat until they're full. I can't do that. I, uh, I have an overeating problem and I, I also just love the leftovers. So that's for sure. I, I mean, I th- the tendency is that we eat so fast. I'll eat too fast. Yeah, that's if true. I do slow down, then I will not eat as much because then you know it hits you a little too late after you've after you've eaten too fast that oh now I'm full. You know you yeah. get about two hours behind the curve on that thing. Yeah. But the food is so darn good, man. You just gotta oh. It's hard to refrain. It's hard to discipline yourself. Well, but the yeah, tryptophan for me, the tryptophan lasts a week. But the big, <laughs> yeah. but the bigger, but the bigger question is, is that you just finished with Thanksgiving overeating, and we've got coming up. We're bookending another major holiday eating, whether it be Christmas or New Year's Eve or other holidays near the end of the year. Uh, I don't even care if it's the age of COVID. People are going to overeat again. So how how does a a, a a a svelte guy like you, Bill Jordan, uh, address uh, these two major eating periods of time stacked so close together? Do you have a trick for that? Well, um, I don't know if I have a trick. Well, I guess if it's anything, well, yeah, you wear black because it's slimming. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, but you know, it doesn't even just start at Thanksgiving. It actually starts. Uh, I, I think it starts at Halloween mm, when people, sure. you know, they buy the Halloween candy early and then they eat it all. Then they got to go buy more Halloween candy for actual Halloween. I mean, I really think it starts in Halloween. Though. So October, November, December, the last three months of the year are very high calorically challenging times that if you make the right choices and I know people will say, well, what's the fun in that? Well, I guess fitting into my clothes is kind of fun. Um, I just, have, I'm trying, I'm not always doing well. My wife, left. here's a, here's what, here's a typical conversation in my house. I'll say, I think we need to go low carb. And my wife will respond by saying, I feel like baking <laughs> and she's going to bake. And she knows that I am cheap enough that I don't want anything to go to waste. So if she whips up some kind of bread or pies or cakes, I will eat them. Because I don't want it to go to waste. I'm a member of the you know clean plate club, um, but for me, I've kind of gotten into this, it, I, and I'm not super duper disciplined about it. But the intermittent fasting. I've got a nephew who's a doctor, and he really pitched me hard on this. And my brother, my middle brother, who's six years older than I, at last count has dropped forty pounds. Oh my! Wow. He went from one. He went from 216 to 176. You do the math on that. Good for him. And with, with intermittent fasting. So intermittent fasting is like the 16-8 rule. You eat in an eight-hour window, and then you go 16 hours without eating. So if he eats dinner at 7 o'clock, say, and then so it finish at 8 o'clock, well, 16 hours later is noon. That's when you can eat lunch. So I don't eat breakfast anymore. I wait and have 
lunch. Now, lunch may be at 1130 for me if I'm really, really getting hungry. So I will do that. And, and if you still make good choices, but you're only eating in those eight hours, you will lose weight. And that and there's a lot to be said for the intermittent fasting because it gets you into a type of ketosis, which is, believe it or not, guys, I feel more energy and I feel a little better uh, it's going to sound ironic to say I feel a little sharper when I'm searching for the word, <laughs> but I, I, I do feel a little mentally, uh, mentally sharper eating less and using that intermittent fasting uh, technique or practice. Well, I'll tell you that I, I've used the intermittent fasting intermittently. That's the problem because yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll go to intermittent fast and then after about a week and a half, I'm making great progress and uh, maybe I'll lose uh, 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 maybe 12 pounds, which and you really feel good. And then, you know, that um, potato canist shows up or uh, uh, not cheesecake anymore. I haven't had cheesecake in a long time, but there are plenty of uh, other things, that, uh, not even Oreos anymore. That used to be my favorite drug of choice. Uh, right. But but you just fall off the wagon and boy, is it easy to fall off the wagon. And stay off the wagon because wagons are dangerous. Could be. <laughs> yeah. yeah. John, you tried it also uh, uh, at one time uh, or, or another, didn't you? Yeah, I I've done the intermittent fasting uh, for and I, and I go back on it. I'll, I'll go back on it this week now. Um, I've been doing it for uh, I don't know two months, and I, I because I really didn't do it uh, for dieting per se. I did lose a few pounds, but uh, nothing really significant. Mostly what I found was like Bill, it, it does kind of, uh, well, it helped me digest my food more. Mm. And uh, so I, I'm sure I'm hungry when my 16 hours is up, but I find that I am healthier. Generally speaking, my body is working because those eight hours of food consumption, um, and again, I'm not dieting during those eight hours. I'm just eating normally, but I'm eating one meal less. As Bill said, I'm, I'm not eating breakfast. So there's less food in my gut. It gets absorbed better. And uh, generally speaking, I do feel better. Um, and I'll go back on it now that I've uh, loaded up my gut with turkey and mm. stuffing. Yeah, and that's, you know, and that's understandable that we do that. Um, but uh, if I can push away from the big goods, the cakes and the cookies and the pies a little bit more and lean a little bit more on the turkey yes, and the green beans, for example, then I'm, I'm better off. And again, yeah. I, I meet with people like, well, what's the fun in that? Again, the, the fun is feeling better. Yeah. You know, it just, I like, I like feeling better. I like having more energy. But with every, that's just me. with every diet, unless you really stick to it, uh, it's you're going to constantly yo-yo up and down. So it seems to me that so far in this conversation, we have failed our audience <laughs> on what to do because they have gorged themselves just well, recently then... for Thanksgiving and the end of the year is coming up. And I don't think we've, we've provided much help that they'll be successful. So let them just eat and enjoy and then they can go on a diet in January and then right. break that resolution by January. 10th. Sure. And we'll do another video on New Year's resolutions and why they don't work. <laughs> right. <laughs> so we'll Art, we'll name this video "Don't Do What We Do." Right. Yeah. So uh, anyway, Bill, you had you, uh, one of the most profound things that you said at the beginning of, of this episode was that if we provided the opportunity for you <laughs> to promote yourself and your practices and your cups, yeah. okay? Yeah. Uh, it, yeah. So I'm so. Consider the opportunity to start right now. All right. Well, thank you so much. Well, it was about a year ago that I, I came up with this idea and I started posting some videos on Facebook and since I've moved over to a YouTube channel of Embrace the Boom. And it's meant to empower, inspire, and encourage the fellow members of my of the baby boomer generation to not just run out the clock, but to set new goals and dream new dreams and achieve these things. And as crazy as the world is these days, I think we can still achieve some of that. So I anchor that notion with my mug because I drink coffee every every morning, virtually every morning. And I also got the, the YouTube videos, that just of 15 practices, 16 practices, uh, that when I do them, I lead a better life. There's no doubt about it when I can, and I'll never perfect them. It's like anything, right? It's like we talk about the diet. You never 
stay on it, but you can get back on it. You can get back on the wagon anytime you want, but you can get links to all the videos and get this mug, 15 ounce sturdy, sturdy mug holds whatever you want in it by going to Bill Jordan, embrace the boom.com. And then I always remind you, you know, is live your life, forget your age and embrace the boom. There you go. Thank Great, you, Bill. Yeah. Uh, here's to some more Turkey while I embrace the boom. Absolutely. Embra <laughs> embrace the drumstick. <laughs> Thanks for having me, guys. See you soon. See you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.